please hit subscribe. This problem appears at the qualifying examinations for applicants for Japanese government or MEC scholarships 2020. There are two mathematics exams, one for social sciences, mathematics A, and another for natural sciences, mathematics B. This problem is from the 2020 Mathematics B questionnaire. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. This is a continuation of problem two. And problem two, part two reads, given that there exists a right triangle with the side lengths square root of A, square root of B, square root of C, what is the conditional probability P sub two that A, B, C are mutually different? There are two key ideas that we need to recall to solve this problem. The first is that for a right triangle, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the two other sides. So if the hypotenuse is, is the side with the length square root of a, then a must be equal to b plus c. And it's also the case that if a equals b plus c, then it is a right triangle. So this is just from the Pythagorean theorem. It says that a right triangle, it is a right triangle if and only if this identity, this relationship among the sides holds. The second key idea is the idea of conditional probability. We are looking for the conditional probability P sub 2. And it says that if we, if we know in advance that the triangle is a right triangle, what is the probability that it is a scalene triangle? So what we're actually being asked is that, what is the probability that we get a right triangle and a scalene triangle? So the triangle that we get is both a right triangle and a scalene triangle, given that we already know that it's a right triangle. So the, the way we compute that is we count the number of possibilities, the number of, of ways where we could get a right and scalene triangle, so a triangle that is both right and scalene, and then we divide that by the number of ways of how we can get a right triangle, whether scalene or not. So again, the numerator is the number of ways that the triangle is both right and scaling, and the denominator is just the number of ways that we get a right triangle. So that's conditional probability. Well, let's just remind ourselves that we're looking for P sub two. And so we want to count the numerator, the number of triangles that are both right and scaling. And we also want to count the number of triangles that are right regardless of whether or not it's scalene and we will start with the denominator because that's easier so we recall from the previous slide that a right triangle it is a right triangle if and only if a equals b plus c so we will look at all the possibilities all the combinations of die outcomes such that a equals b plus c of course, we could also have b equals a plus c and c equals a plus b. But if if we do it in a manner, if we count it in the manner that we will do here, we can see that we can easily do that permutation using the counting techniques. And we only have to consider a equals b plus c. So let's start with that. So here I have a table. And you can look at this table as actually two tables. So the first four columns here is actually it's actually the same as the second four columns here. It's just that the combinations here are different from here. So this is just the same space. The first column is a combination of B and C. And the second column is for those B and C, what is the A, the value of A. The third column is actually whether it's scaling or not, because we th that will be used later for the numerator but it's helpful to just put it in our table right off the bat and 
the fourth column is just counting the number of right triangles so this fourth column will count all the right triangles that that fit this criteria and the permutations here so now we will start listing all the right triangles and again all right triangles would satisfy this criterion here a equals b plus c so let's start with b and c so b and c suppose they are both one what would be a to make it a right triangle so that's one plus one two and is this a scalene triangle and this is not a scalene triangle let's remind ourselves that a scalene triangle is a triangle where all three sides are different they have different lengths in this case b and c have the same lengths so this is not a scalene triangle but still it's a right triangle and if you look at this we can actually instead of having one one two we could have two one one or one two one and if we recall how we count that we count that by doing three factorial that's how many sides over how many sides repeat so there are two sides that repeat so three factorial over two factorial that's three and that also makes sense because we could have one one two one two one and two one one and again that's just three possibilities so that covers all the permutations for b c and a with these sides now let's move to the next possible right triangle so the way we do that is just we just increment one of the sides let's say we increment c from one to two so one two and then we also list the reverse so two one for because both of these will have one plus two or two plus one will have the same a which is three in this case now are these cases scalene triangles clearly yes because that's one two and three they are all different and how many scalene triangles can we form with the with the numbers one two three with the lengths one two three or rather square of the lengths one two and three and again that's just the permutation of the of 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 these um, elements so that's three factorial over how many repeating elements no repeating elements of so zero factorial which is just one so three factorial is just six and now that covers all the possibilities for when any of the so any of the sides would have a square of one two and three now let's proceed to the next possible right triangle again we just do an increment so now let's do two let's do c equals two to c equals three and we again write the reverse of that which is just three one here because for both these cases a would have to be three plus one or one plus three which is four again are these combinations scaling and yes because one three and four are all different and in the same manner we can count the number of permutations we just say three factorial and that would be six again then we do that for the next possible right triangle that is we again increment three to four one plus four or four plus one is just five for a and again this is scalene and there are six of those permutations again and then we do that again for the next possible right triangle so four plus one is five so one five or five one five plus one or one plus five here we get a six for a again this is scalene these are scalene triangles and there are six permutations now we cannot increment further we cannot go from five to six because if we go from five to six then one plus six would be seven so a would have to be seven and the maximum value for a is only six because uh, again a is just the number of dots on a side of the die so these are all the possible combinations we have for when b equals one so we now increment b from one to two so here we do b equals two now c would we'd want to start at c equals one but we've already covered it here so actually we only have to start we, we need to start at c equals two now two 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 what would be a that would be four 
and is this scalene no this isn't because two and two are equal so not all three sides are different so this is not scalene and again there are three permutations given these repeating values here repeating values here so we could it in the same way here in three now we increment two to three and we again write down three five and if we have these values for b and c a would be two plus three so we get a five here and so if if that's the case then we have two three and five which it which are all scalene triangles the combinations the permutations of those would still give you a scalene triangle or scaling triangles and so we we mark it with a circle here and again we can count them using this formula three factorial and we have six then we increment three to four two four it's pretty much the same process we just write again four two and two plus four or four plus two a would have to be six and again two four and six are all different numbers so we have a scalene triangle for that combination and there are six of them now we cannot go from four to five because two plus five would be seven a would have to be seven and so we do not consider any more increments for c so we increment b and when we increment b we have b equals three and then if we start with c equals one that's already covered three one is here so three equals two that's also covered three two over here so we start with three 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 plus three then a would have to be six and again this is a right triangle because it, it satisfies this but it's not scaling because three and three are equal and again there are three of those now this would be the last combination that we'd have to consider because if we go further let's say we increment from three to four then again that would be seven three plus four is seven so again that's not something we need to consider so if we increment b to four then we're going to start with four three because we already considered four one and four two we considered four two here yeah so we, we're going to start with four three but again four three is just the reverse of three four so that's seven and we will and it, it's quite clear that if we go even higher the sum of b and c will even be greater than six so we actually can stop here three three right at the middle now all we need to do is just count add all the right scaling triangles add the add the counts and divide it by the total number of right triangles so the number of right triangles is just all of these so three plus six plus six plus six plus six so that's actually six one two three four five six six times six is 36 plus three is 39 42 45 so there are 45 right triangles and then we count the number of scalene triangles so actually it might be easier to count the number of non-scalene triangles which is three 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 nine so 45 minus nine you have 36 scalene triangles therefore the conditional probability that we're looking for is 36 which is the number of right scaling triangles over 45 which is the number of right triangles or if you reduce that into lowest terms divide by 9 divide by 9 that's 4 over 5. if you learned something new today please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications See ya.